Please ignore the complete disaster in here. Um, this is sort of in my dirty room in the reno, but today I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to paint this mural. Partnered with Kent Building Supplies and Seco Paints. Let's do this. For a mural like this, I just use two colors, the top one and the bottom one, and I just mix them as I go. You can use 100 colors if you want to, but I'm just showing you that you don't need that many cans of paint. So to start off, you need to paint the top of your wall white or whatever color you chose. I'm using Seco Muse Delicate White. It's my favorite white. So you're going to fully paint the top portion or the top half, however you wanna do it. I start about a quarter of the way up because I'm gonna be adding several layers of mountains, but you can also go like halfway. You can literally do anything really. The first layer is a great way to distinguish where you want your mountains. I'm finding that these look a little bit too similar, so I'm going to be adding a deeper valley and I just go over it with the white paint. So now we're gonna make the second set of mountains color. So you're gonna use your white and add a little bit of dark. You can also do this in a separate container and keep a little bit of white, but what I do is just pour out a tiny bit of white in another container for some details later on but I mix it directly in the can. Now you're going to paint your second row of mountains in this new color you've created. I like to add a little bit of white to the bottom before it's dry and then blend it upwards. It creates a look of fog for behind the third set of mountains that you're about to do. The more mountains I do, the more white I add because I figured the fog's sort of like down there, I guess. These are some good directions. Speaking of fog, I didn't really realize there was some sort of residue on my camera as I was filming this and I actually look like I'm in the fog. Now that we've done this, our mountain peak on this side will probably peak here, which will go down, and then this will appear, what you'll see at the end, that this will appear as a fog cloud mist, sort of like behind the mountains. Just a sec, let me add the next layer and you'll get it. Always use your same brush, because now I'm gonna go back into the gray that we mixed. I'm gonna kinda go to the top, and it's completely fine if it does not dry the same color. We're always mixing, it's always the same tones. I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of white while this is still wet, and it will be like a snow. Man, I'm really feeling like Bob Ross. <laughs> so then we're gonna repeat that on all the tops of those mountains. And the best part, we're gonna save all of the colors so that we can come in with a sharper line on this white once the gray is dried. So do not worry about going over it. You're gonna get the texture of the mountains that you want. And then later on, you can make the white sharper. Every time I mix a paint color, I do keep a small little can of it, just like a dollar store container so I can use it for touch-ups later on. But now you're going to add a little bit more dark to the can for your third set of mountains and then just have at her in the same way. Step back and see if you like the flow. You can always add higher peaks or deeper valleys. This is your masterpiece. That's my best Bob Ross impression. You're gonna get a good coat of paint sort of like across the bottom of your mountains before you decide where you're gonna put your fog or your clouds. I don't always want the cloudy part to be sort of like at the same area. I'm just gonna rotate them, smaller mountains with the fog. Now I'm gonna do a fog patch here and probably on the other side just to break it up a bit and give it a bit more depth. Dip it in your white and just mix away. This time we have a little bit of black left and a lot of our mixed gray. So I'm actually going to put the mixed gray into the black this time to give it a stronger, deeper base for our last few sets of mountains. In full dark paint, this mountain is going to appear as he's in the back. So we're gonna do all dark, and then we're going to dip um, into the lighter gray and sort of just bring this guy down on top, see? And then him as well. So it's still the same darkness, it's just, a little bit more dimension of the mountains. I don't like that. He's in the back, so I'm just gonna give him a little peek, keeping with this lighter line to sort of define that mountain, and then just blend him up. I must have wiped off my camera at some point because I'm no longer in the fog and this looks a lot better. 
I am just continuing down with the current color so that when I add the mountains, the valleys are colored in and then I'll add the white and light gray to show the mountain depths. I'll let that dry and I'm gonna clean up the white. I freehand some and then I tape some off. There's no real reason behind it. It's really just whatever you're comfortable with, so I do both. Then when the white is still wet and there's a little bit on my brush, I'm gonna make some clouds. So basically I'm just going to sponge it on until I like it. I don't dip my paintbrush in the white. I just use the tiny little bit that's left over. That way your clouds look foggy, I guess. You can use big bold clouds if you want to, but I like this method. Some mountains look like they're behind them and then some mountains look like they're in front. Again, there's no real how to on this. It's just sort of how you want your mural to look. And that is why I suggested in the beginning that you get little tubware containers because if you don't like a cloud, you can just take that mountain color and go right over it. So the reason why we are fully painting all the way down, even though we're going to be adding trees, is because trees aren't fully solid, so you want to be able to see the definition between the lighter mountain and the darker, almost black tree. While you put this on, you can then go ahead and do all of your touch-ups to your mountains, to your clouds. Don't worry about this bottom layer being really blended because like this spot and this spot are just gonna be peeking through the backs of the trees, so it really doesn't matter. For the trees at the bottom, I'm going to be using full black. It's the same black that I've used on my feature walls called Black Magic. Start with a thin line down to the baseboard and then use the end of your brush, almost like little arrowheads all along your line, down to the ground. Trees all look really different, so your painted ones should too gaps, straggly pieces, and all. <laughs> the number one thing I hear from people is that they're worried about messing it up. This entire mural is technically mess ups or things that I just didn't like and worked around. The wallpaper that's trending today looks so hand done and imperfect, your mural should too. So I just kept going with the trees. Some are darker, some are lighter. Just literally use all of your dark colors and it'll turn out beautifully. There's no real direction on how to do it. Um, if they're too light, add a little bit of dark. If they're too dark, add a little bit of light. But then I decided on the first set of mountains, you know, it's close enough to like the eye if you're standing down by the river. Anyway, that's how I'm envisioning the mural. You're going to be able to see a little bit of the tree line there. So I just use a bit of the lighter color and sort of put some mountains in those little valley peaks. Valleys, not peaks. At the end is when I really like to add the bolder clouds. I leave the softer ones like we did a couple steps back because they sort of blend in and make everything look airy and smooth. But now once you see where your trees are, where your peaks are, where some parts of your mural might be lacking um, and you can just put in bolder clouds or don't. <laughs> it's literally, again, your masterpiece. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I also hope that I was able to show you that you don't have to worry about being too perfect. You can use all of your imperfections to make your mural your own and that I inspired you to get painting. Happy DIYing. See you next time.